What's going on everyone? My name is Benjamin Nowak and I want to thank each of you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And this is another small mall series video. Basically what it is, is the small mall series is dedicated to small mall specific information. Me sharing my knowledge with you guys so you have the confidence and information you need to go out and catch big small mall. And in my last video, which was talking about uh, fall movements of smallmouth bass. I talked about reaction baits. So that's what this video is going to be focused on is what reaction baits I like to throw, where I like to throw them, and hopefully introduce you guys to some new techniques or new baits that will help you be more effective when you go out and target these fish this fall. So we're going to start with one that's kind of trendy, kind of popular, um, and it's a really fun way to catch big fish. And that is swim baiting. Now in swim baiting, you have two different styles of soft plastic swim baits. You have your hollow body style, which is what I have right here, and you have your traditional soft plastic swim bait. Now, the hollow body style is unique in the sense that, or you would use the hollow body when you want something with a slower kick that puts off a lot more movement and vibration at slower speeds. This essentially will kick side to side really wide, and it's a, more effective bait when those fish are feeding very aggressively. Now the bait I have here is a producer swim bait. It's four and a half inch in the sexy rogue kill color. Um, with the head, it's actually probably about five and a half inches. So it's a relatively big bait, but in the fall when those small mouth are feeding really heavily, they don't really care about the size of the bait. They just want something that they can eat. Um, and this is going to trigger a lot of really big bites because it's a bigger profile meal. It'll give those fish an opportunity to feed up really heavily before they have to get into that winter mode where they shut down essentially for the rest of the year. So this is a four and a half inch producer swim bait. This is my favorite size hollow body. Um, they also have it in a three and a half inch, I believe, but this is my go-to when I'm choosing a hollow body swim bait. If I want a soft plastic traditional style, uh, there are a couple different baits that I'm going to throw. Now, everyone knows about Kytex, and rightfully so. Kytex are an awesome bait. Um, and one of my favorite colors all year long is the perch color in the 3.8 inch size. 3.8 is my go to Kytex size. Um, I can bite it down if I want. I just like the size of that boot on the back of this. It kicks really fast, and it's really soft. It just. Kytex are popular because they work and they catch fish. Now the perch color, why I like this bait so much is because it is a great bait for when they're imitating perch, but it also stands out well when that water gets a little bit dirty. It's a green pumpkin back with a chartreuse belly and some black and orange flake. Um, just a really good all around color. Can, use, can be used to imitate a bunch of different types of forage. Like I said, whether the water is dirty or they're actually feeding on perch, this is a great color. Another good color of Kytec bait is called the Electric Shad. Um, it's a little bit more natural color. When the water is cleaner, I like to go with that Electric Shad. But if I know they're feeding on perch, or if that water gets a little bit dirty or off colored, this perch color is a great color. Now, another bait that I really like to throw is the Bass Magnet Lures Shifter Shad. Now, this is something that I've been throwing for probably four and a half years now but there's two colors in the shifter shed that I like. Um, you have the bluegill flash color, or excuse me, just the bluegill color, which is an airbrush bait. And the reason I like this is it's more translucent. So when I'm fishing cleaner water, this is a great choice. It's a little bit stiffer bait than the Kytec, but it's got a really tight movement um, and it holds up well when those fish eat it. You can probably catch four or five fish on this bait versus the high tech you can probably get one or two fish on there. And when I'm talking the shifter shad, my favorite size is a three and a half inch. It's a little bit smaller bait, um, but it's a perfect size for the smallmouth. A color that I love when the water gets dirty is this straight chartreuse swim bait. Now, this is a color that I've been throwing uh, a long time and I've been smashing big smallmouth and it looks ridiculous but smallmouth hate the color chartreuse and rigged on the back of a standard swim bait hook or an underspin, they will absolutely smash this bait. So as ridiculous as it looks, doesn't really look like any bait fish, they will absolutely wreck it. It's three and a half inch from Bass Magnet Lures and it's their shifter shad. 
Another way for you guys looking for an alternative to a Kitek um, is the Excite Shad Nasty Swim Bait. And this bait has a little bit different action than your Kitek, which in some cases on heavily pressured lakes can make all the difference when everyone's out there throwing a Kitek. It's got a narrower body where it tapers down towards that tail, has a very unique kick. And what I really like is it has a belly slot. So if you wanna rig this on a belly weighted swim bait hook and you're fishing around heavy vegetation or, or cover, you can rig it with that belly weighted swim bait hook and uh, fish it virtually weedless and snagless. So now let's talk about the different hooks that I like to use. On all of my swim baits, I like to use a screw lock style hook. So what that means is on the shank of the hook, there's actually a screw keeper where you take your bait and you screw it onto the screw lock. Um, that's gonna help you save money. Your, your baits are gonna last longer and you don't have to use super glue. I don't like to use super glue in my boat. I end up super gluing my fingers together. So if I don't have to, I'm gonna use these screw lock hooks. This is a Gamagatsu super line hook and it is a super stout, heavy duty hook. I like a heavy duty hook for swim baiting, um, especially around smallmouth because when you set the hook on those fish at the end of a long cast, you don't have to worry about bending this hook out. And with big smallmouth that like to make long runs, hard runs, you're not gonna flex this hook at all. It's a very stout hook. So the other hook that I like is the spin tricks hook. And this is my favorite underspin hook. And the reason for that is there's no arm here to flex. Your blade is fixed to this piece of lead under the head and it keeps it keeled out really well. Also has a screw lock keeper, which I like when I'm using swim baits, as I already mentioned. Um, and so anytime I'm picking out swim bait hooks, if I have the opportunity to have the screw lock, that's what I'm gonna go with. Again, it's also a really stout hook, so I don't have to worry about flexing and bending that out. So this is the spin tricks hook. All of this stuff is gonna be linked down in the description for you guys uh, if you're interested in checking any of this stuff out. Now we're gonna move into jerk baiting. Now jerk baiting is something that I don't do a ton of in the fall, but it's a great way to cover a lot of water and locate where fish are at. And because of that, I really only have one jerk bait that I'm gonna be throwing most of the time, especially when I'm covering water. And that is the Six Sense Lures Provoke 106X. This is a bait that's caught me a ton of fish. If you guys can't tell, the paint is like worn off of this bait, but this is a copper green shag color. This is a great bait, as I mentioned, to cover water. You can make long casts with it. It has a weight transfer system. And uh, that's really key when I'm Fishing and jerk bait, just fish it as fast as I can, cover water, locate where those fish are at. Jerk baiting to me, I lose a bunch of fish, so I don't like to do it when I'm around schools because a lot of times when you hook a fish and you lose it, you have the potential to shut down that school. So I wanna fish something that, that I have a high hook to land ratio. And I know a lot of people love to throw a jerk bait. For me, it's just not the most effective way to put fish in the boat, but this is my favorite one. So now let's talk about crank baiting. And crank baiting in general is probably my all time favorite way to fish. And the reason for that is you can fish it fast. When those fish hit it, they rip the rod away from you. And uh, it's just a really fun, vicious way to catch some big smallmouth that I think a lot of people overlook. So we're gonna talk about a couple different styles of crank baits. And the first one's a shallow cranking technique. And we're talking about square bills. So for you, those of you guys that fish rivers or ponds, square bills can be really effective. And this is your standard KBD 2.5. I like the 2.5 size in the fall. Um, your bait fish tend to be a little bit bigger and you just catch bigger fish on the 2.5 than you do the 1.5, so why not throw the 2.5? However, when things get tough and when they've seen a bunch of square bills, there is a bait that I like to go to to pick up a couple extra fish, um, to trigger some extra bites, and that is the six cents Lewis Crush 75X flat. This is a flat sided crankbait. It's gonna have a tighter wobble. So as opposed to a lot of crankbaits on the market, this one knocker sound is gonna draw those fish in. It's going to give them something unique to look at. It's got a unique body profile, a unique wiggle coming through the water and a ton of awesome great colors. Um, but this is probably one of my all time favorite, Ballistic Sunfish. I don't believe they make this color anymore. So I have to really cherish the last two or three of these baits that I have. Um, but they do have other baits that look relatively similar. So Crush 75X flat. If I had to choose one square bill all year long, this is the one it's gonna be. Catches some giants. The next technique we're gonna talk about in the crankbait lineup is um, lipless cranking. And there's a couple different ways that you can do this. I have a video talking about lipless crankbaits and how to fish them, but there's two 
lipless crankbaits I like just overall for the fall. The first one is your Strike King KBD Red Eye Shad. This is a staple in a lipless crankbaiter's arsenal. Um, I like to throw a half ounce size. Half ounce size lets me cover a ton of different water, you know, whether I'm fishing in six inches or I'm fishing in 20 feet, I can fish this half ounce size. And chrome blue back, if you're around any sort of bait fish, is my favorite color. So the way that I like to fish the uh, Strike King Red Eye Shad is typically yo-yoing. So I'm gonna take this bait, I'm gonna cast it out, I'm gonna let it sink, and I'm gonna let it get right above the bottom, and then I'm gonna yo-yo it up. So it's gonna go down, shimmy, 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 yo-yo up, shimmy, 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 shimmy. Um, that's my favorite way to fish this. When you go to lift this bait back up, and it goes to pull away from those fish, that's when they're gonna smash it. Another really cool way that you can fish this though, is you can cast it out there, just burn it back to the boat. When I say burn it, I'm talking like a six, four to one, burning as fast as you can. And as it's coming through the water, in the middle of the water column, they will absolutely rip the rod out of your hand. So that's a really fun way to fish this bait, but a little more time sensitive. You have to be around the right group of fish to get that technique to work. And then the tried and true Bill Lewis rattle trap. This is an amazing bait when you want a straight retrieve or when you want a bait to rip out of grass. So if you're fishing around grass, if you have smallmouth around uh, shallow vegetation, I really like to throw the Bill Lewis rattle trap. It's got a very loud rattle system um, and it comes through the grass really well. It's got that very narrow, narrow body profile. Better hurry up because I'm losing some light here, but we're going to talk about medium and deep cranking now. And there's a couple of very unique crankbaits I'm going to be talking about, but we're going to start with the tried and true Strike King 3XD. The Strike King 3XD is a very small profile medium diving crankbait, dives to about 10 to 12 foot of water and catches big smallmouth. That small profile gives these fish the opportunity to get it in their little small mouths and catches giants. So if I'm fishing in that 10 to 12 foot range, this is typically the bait that I'm gonna be throwing. Now the colors that I like to use, chartreuse black back is a really good color. Um, I also like your normal shag colors, like your sexy shad, um, your chartreuse sexy shad, and I believe they make this in a perch color now, which is also a really great color. Now moving on to some of the more unique crankbaits, the ones that I'm probably gonna regret showing you. We're gonna start with a old tried and true Six Sense 300 DD. The Six Sense 300 DD caught me my personal best smallmouth, six pounds, nine ounces. And it's got a loud one knocker, which is what makes this bait unique. And that one knocker causes this bait to have a very unique action coming through the water. It also doesn't have a curved bill, which believe it or not, I actually like. Uh, it doesn't pull that hard and it dives down to about 15 feet of water. Not super deep, um, but you don't need it to. It's just an awesome crankbait. The key about this crankbait is the rattle. If you pick this up next to other 15 foot diver crankbaits, it's relatively heavy. You can cast it a mile, which is important when fishing for smallmouth. 300 DD is my favorite smallmouth crankbait of all time, and I don't even know if they make it anymore. Uh, this color here is Ballistic Sunfish. It's a great color when the water's a little bit dirty. Uh, they had a bluegill color, which was really good, or chartreuse pearl is the best color that Six Sense has ever made. It's great for dirty water, clean water. Um, but the 300 DD is my all time favorite smallmouth crankbait. Another really good one, believe it or not, is a Berkeley Dredger. Now, I know Berkeley gets a bad name when it comes to their hard baits, but the Berkeley Dredger, what I like is this also dives down to 15 feet, but comparatively, the body size is significantly smaller. It's a smaller body crankbait, dives to 15 and a half foot, um, and it dives quick. It has a a little bit of a rounded bill and it has a metal weight. It's gonna help it dive down to depth and it has a unique rattle system in there. Um, so if you guys are looking for a good smaller body crankbait that dives to 15 feet, the Berkeley Dredger is a great crankbait. It's also less expensive. I believe it runs for $6.99. So it's not a super expensive crankbait, won't break the bank and it catches giant smallmouth. 
Now the most sneaky smallmouth crankbait on the market. And one that I probably shouldn't be telling you guys about is the Demiki DC 300. The 200 is also a great crankbait, but this DC 300, something about this bait is amazing. One, it has an even smaller profile than the Berkeley Dredger. But what gives it the action is this bill. It's got a very thin bill, cupped, so it dives very quickly and it comes through the water at a very unique angle. It's a super unique crankbait, small body crankbait that catches giant smallmouth bass. This color is IU. If I had to only choose one color, I would choose this. It's a clear water color. Um, chartreuse blackback is good when the water gets a little bit off colored. And then they have a couple other really good colors. So now let's talk about gear really quickly before this lighting goes away. Um, I wanna talk about a crankbait rod for you guys that will work for all of the rods that I just mentioned. And this is the ARC crankbait series rod. The model is the seven foot four, and that's perfect for your square bills, your lipless crankbaits. Uh, it also works well with that, that medium diving crankbait down to 15 foot. And what I like about it is how soft this rod is. It is a composite rod, and what that means is it's partially graphite, partially glass, so it's got a softer tip than your standard graphite cranking rods. And that's gonna give those fish an opportunity to eat that bait better before you jack their face. So our crankbait rod, seven foot four. The reel I like is the Luz BB1 um, or BB1 Pro, depending on which one you can get your hands on. Six four to one gear ratio is best all around gear ratio for cranking. And then I typically rig it on 12 to 14 pound Sunline Sniper fluorocarbon, depending on the technique. Uh, if I'm trying to get the bait deeper, I will go down to 10, but 12 is really that key number. This is another good bait. Six cent CD 15 dives to about 19 foot of water. And that perch color is just really, really, really sexy. So CD 15 from six cents, another good thing. And now a rod that will handle the swim baits. This is the Arc Randall Tharp series, seven foot six offshore special rod. It's a mag medium heavy. Now, why do I like that? It's in between a medium heavy and a heavy. It's because you're making a long cast with this swim baits. And when those fish eat that bait as it's falling at the very end of your long cast, you want to be able to set the hook into those fish and keep them pinned. So you want something a little bit heavier. I like something a little bit heavier than your standard medium heavy. So this offshore special rod, seven foot six, is a great swim bait rod. Um, the reel that I'm throwing is a Luz, Team Luz Custom Pro Speed Spool, I believe. And uh, the seven five to one gear ratio. When I'm fishing for smallmouth, you want something with a high gear ratio so you can pick up line quickly especially with those swim baits where you got that single hook, you want to be able to jack their face and then get them to the boat. You don't really have to worry about finessing those fish. You just hook them, fight them, get them to the boat so they don't have an opportunity to throw that swim bait. Line size is typically going to be a 15 to 17 pound test. Sunline sniper fluorocarbon. And those are my setups. So I hope this video helped you guys get an idea of the reaction baits that I'm throwing. Uh, some of the things that I have confidence in when I'm out there fishing for smallmouth bass. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I'll be down there responding to you guys, trying to give you guys the confidence and information you guys need to be successful on the water. Tell me what you guys want to see next. What do you guys want to see about smallmouth fishing? Let me know in the comment section below. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Take care, Ted Lines. God bless. Here's your passion.